This is my Notion task management system, and it's designed for one thing, working less whilst achieving more. Most people build their task system to squeeze more into their day, but mine does the opposite. By the end of this video, you'll uncover the five properties that every task management system needs to focus only on what actually moves your life and work forward. Because if you don't have a system like this, you'll keep mistaking busyness for progress. These properties might just change your task management forever. Subscribe for Notion tutorials. Let's dive in. So this is my template headquarters, which I'll be using in this video as the example. But of course, you can set this up in your own Notion dashboard. But if you are interested in this template, then there's a link in the description. So first, let's just talk about the normal settings that we have for a task. So that would be the task name. Let's just call it task one, very creative. And we have the checkbox. These two, I won't even count them as properties because you kind of have to have them in a task management system. You've probably seen people do to-do lists like this in Notion task one. This here is a very standard setup, but this setup isn't actually effective. So in this video, I'll talk about the other properties here that we need for an effective task management system. I'll just add a few random tasks. Let's first have a look at these two here, which is one of the methods. It's inspired by the Eisenhower matrix. Under the importance here, we have a few options, important, not important, and move the needle. And then under urgency, we have urgent, not urgent, and habit. So let's just make task four here, not important and not urgent. Then let's say task three here is not important, but it is urgent. As you can see, it actually jumps up in the queue here. So task three is sitting above task four. That's because I have this rule for my sorting here, which means urgent tasks appear above the not urgent tasks. Now let's make task two here important, but not urgent. As you can see, once again, it jumps up in the queue. So task two is sitting in between task three and task four. That's because even if a task is important, but not urgent, we probably should do the urgent task before we do the important one. And then lastly, task one, obviously, if it's important and it's urgent, we should probably do that first. So it jumps up here at the top of this queue. Because now when I'm planning out my day, what I can do is simply drag and drop from the top of this task list. Or of course, we could click here and just select the date like that. And once my day is full, then what I can do is just add them to the next day. So that's the importance and urgency task management system. And this will deeply help me to work less as I know, hey, I should probably not even bother doing tasks that are not important and not urgent. And all of the tasks that have these settings will also appear under this here, which is the low tab. We know, hey, we probably don't even need to bother doing these. And that brings me to my next property, which is this state here. So I have flow, quick, easy, and personal. So flow tasks are tasks that are cognitively demanding, and you probably need to spend about two hours working on them. And we have quick tasks, which only take a few minutes. We have easy tasks, which aren't very cognitively demanding. And then we have personal tasks, such as seeing a friend or something. And the reason that I like filling these out here is because it will help me to plan my week even better. So let's just say all of these here, hypothetically, are planned for today. Well, under this week's tasks tab, I can see all of these tasks here and their flow required. And these here are breaking one of my productivity rules. I can only have two flow tasks per day. That's because a flow task requires about two hours and our brain can only handle four hours of full cognitive demand per day. So planning three in a day is unrealistic. So what I'll do here is look at which of these flow tasks appear at the bottom of this list, which is task two, and I'll simply drag it to the next day. I'm only going to have two flow tasks per day. Any more than that, and we'll probably burn ourselves out over time. And that's why I have a state of mind property in my Notion task management system. By the way, let's say you're playing tennis with a friend and you label that as personal. Every single task that's been labeled as personal can be found here on this personal page. If I open this up, I can see here tennis. This page here is really useful if you're like me and you're bad at scheduling in personal time. The next properties here are bucket and project, and these are vital for my organization. So what I can do here is go through these tasks and select the bucket. So let's just say all of these here are to do with my job, except for tennis, that's probably not part of my job, that is part of fitness. And then here I can select the project as well that I'm working on. So let's just say for all of these, Let's just create a new one called project one, create that here, and I'll add that to all of these. So all of these tasks here are for my job to do with project one. And what this allows me to do is scroll down and open up this project one page. And this is crucial for my focus because on this project one page here, I only see the tasks, notes, and bottlenecks relevant to project one. And this project system here also makes notes useful because now when I'm taking notes, instead of them falling in a void, 
When I click here on take a quick note, note one, blah, 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 hopefully you take better notes than that. What I can do is say the life bucket here, which is the job and I can say the project. So let's make this project one. And now when I click away, that note will appear where it's useful to me. So when I'm working on this project one, let's just open up this page from here. I can now see this relevant note. This changed my organization forever. When I'm working on a project, I have the relevant information. And that is the third group of properties in my Notion task system. And these next properties here are all to do with time. We have this one here, which is time blocking. And we have this one here, which is time tracking. So in this tab here, what I can do is plan out my day. And there's two main ways you can do this. The first one is to do the difficult tasks first. This idea is often referred to as eating the frog. But of course, if you want to start the day with an easy task, you can drag an easy task to the top. But personally, I like to do the important and urgent tasks first. So what I'll do is simply drag this up to the top. Let's say I'll do this at 9 a.m. It's a flow task, so it will take about two hours. Then I'll drag this one here, say that's 11 a.m. Then maybe I'll want lunch after that. And then task four here at 2 p.m. And then let's say I play tennis at 6 p.m. in the evening. So what I've done here is time blocked my day, also known as time boxing or daily scheduling. Now the next time property here is time tracking, and this is incredibly useful. So what I can do here is fill out exactly how long these tasks are taking me to do. So as I'm working throughout the day, I'll fill out the minutes and tick in the tasks as I complete them. But we're not just tracking for the sake of it. If I scroll down, I can go on this time tracking page and see my exact data. I can see exactly where my time is going, broken down by the project and broken down by the buckets. So here I can see how much time I've spent on my job in total, 4.5 hours. And I can see here if I'm spending enough time on the other buckets in my life. Am I spending enough time on my relationship, on my family and friends, on my study, on my side hustle, on my fitness, etc. This page here has been a game changer for my productivity. Because if you want to know how to work less, just look at where your time is going and then reassess from there. Now the last property is the date property here. And this is vital for me to plan out my week. Because with a system like this, I can drag and drop to any day. See most Notion task systems with Monday like this, and then Tuesday here, these aren't effective. They're a week by week basis. This isn't going to help you with your organization in the long term. Whereas by using the date property here, we can see our list as a calendar. And I can even click here on the month to see my full month of tasks. By using a system like this, we combine our task list with our calendar. If you're interested in headquarters, there's a link in the description. Or if you wanna see the full tour, then you can click on this video here. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this useful.